Good evening. My name is Byron Williams. I'm the president of the local chapter of the NAACP. I'm here with representatives of the NAACP, along with our regional director, Mr. Wilbur Aldridge. I will speak for a few minutes, allowing a couple of minutes if he or others would desire to speak. We are here, obviously, because of an assumption that we would hear more definitive information than we have heard tonight regarding this issue. While the NAACP does understand the relevance and the importance of specificity and accuracy in any type of an audit, particularly a forensic audit, we do want it to go on record that we are very unhappy that at the length of time already covered, this, this issue has not yet come to resolution to any type of resolve that can bring closure to the school district as well as to the community that is obviously concerned. I will not stand here and mirror remarks already made, but I do want to make it clear that the NAACP is involved in this situation for the long haul. We do not plan to go away. We will be here until this item comes to an acceptable conclusion. We know the importance of education and we know the importance of helping these children in every way possible. But the NAACP stands for freedom, for justice, for equality, for all people. Obviously that has not happened or there would be no forensic audit. There would be nothing to put in a newspaper, negative or positive, and we wouldn't be here tonight as well as others who will come whenever we get more definite information from the board as to when we will get not a status, but a final report of this forensic audit. So I stand before you as representative of the NAACP, giving you the assurance as well as the community assurance that we will stay with this issue until this gap is narrower, until it becomes difficult, if not impossible for students to do individually or collectively what these students have done. We seek justice, we seek equality, and we seek it now. Thank you, Reverend Williams. The comments have been reported by the board clerk. Good evening. My name is James Sanders. I reside in the town of Newburgh. I'm a concerned citizen and a taxpayer, and I'm not representing any partisan group. I'm not going to offer any comments this evening, but I want to raise a critical question. I will call the attention of the members of the Board of Ed of the Newburgh and Large City School District, as well as all of you who are in attendance here this evening, that if you would click on the Newburgh and Large City School District website, and the tabs, agenda, and minutes. I would call your attention, please, to the Board of Ed regular meeting of November the 30th of the year 2010. To the effect, there was a resolution that was offered to suspend attendance requirements pursuant to district policy number 5441 student athletic and extracurricular activity participation for the month of December 2010. I'm not going to offer a comment, but I raise a question. In the conduct of your forensic investigation, there needs to be clarification and transparency to the citizens of the Newburgh and Large City School District relevant to why did the Board of Ed vote to suspend this particular attendance item? The public deserves to have an answer. Six of those who are seated this evening voted to support the suspension. We desire clarity and transparency as a part of your investigation to respond to this particular question. At some point, 
in the very near future and not the distant. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Your comments have been recorded by the board clerk. My name is Ben Weiss from the town of Newburgh. Um, there was a pretty large crowd here before, and it kind of reminded me of uh, uh, an old uh, salt that says, um, the press, the press, the newspapers, uh, aren't as good at telling people what to think as they are at telling people what to think about. And it seems like they've got an awful lot of people thinking about um, these athletes and the, uh, the problems that they encountered with cutting classes. But um, to me, that's taking our minds uh, in the wrong direction and taking our eye off the ball. Uh, I, I was upset that the press uh, gave so much ink to that, which is an important, um, an important subject. But it pales in comparison to some of the other things that they should have been talking about. It's an opportunity cost when you divert people like that. Um, but somehow, in today's paper, uh, in a bold-faced inset, some words of wisdom did sneak through. So, something did come through that I think was of importance, and it was a quote from Gilbert Sharp, an ex-employee, who said, the worst kept secret at NFA is its poor graduation rates of blacks. The worst kept secret. Now, when someone says the worst kept secret, right, that's a, sort of a clever way of saying that everyone knows this, right? That it's common knowledge about the graduation rate of blacks at NFA. Well, that's a pretty damn well kept secret, actually. It's not at all the worst kept secret. Maybe the people at NFA know, but I think that out there in the public where this should be known, it's not. I, would, I didn't take any polls this time on this subject, but I would bet that the handful of people who were uh, non-affiliated uh, voters at the uh, last school board election had no idea, had no idea that 40% of blacks aren't graduating, about 35% of Hispanics. I think they would have been shocked to know that. Now that's something that affects not maybe, I don't know, dozens of kids, I'm not really sure of the numbers, but I'm assuming it's dozens of kids who were affected by this athletic cutting, maybe scores, at most a few hundred, I guess. But if you have a 40% of a population not graduating, that means at any given time, thousands, three, 4,000, if my off-the-cuff arithmetic is correct, of kids, at any given time, thousands of kids are being failed, being set up for failure, not a few kids. That's a, that's a, a secret um, that uh, is too well kept, but it's not the best kept secret in this district, not by a long shot. The academic performance, the school report card, shows that even at a good school like Bombville, you have 60, well it was 35 percent past, 65 percent of the third graders at Bombville weren't reading uh, up to snuff, up to, up to a grade requirement. You can check out the school report card if you want. That's a, that secret's even better kept, but that's not even close to the best kept secret in the district. The best kept secret in the district is so well kept that even the people who are, you think would know about this, even the gatekeepers have no idea. It's so hush-hush. And that is how kids are assigned to schools in this district. Nobody knows that. I've, given, I've made hundreds of requests, FOIL requests, I haven't gotten an answer. I've spoken to people who work in the admissions department who said they weren't really sure so I think that if this thought that's being directed to this NFA scandal is to have any real utility, it'll be in exposing, as people suggested, a pervasive um, taciturnity, secrecy of, of, on the part of the board that really needs to be corrected. If, it, if, if, if and this is a huge if, if genuine community participation and control of the schools is to have any meaning at all, that has to stop. So I ask the lively and vibrant minds on the school board to direct their attention, not to what the press tells them to, but to what really matters. And to thank you. Thank you, Mr. Weiss. Your comments have been reported by the board clerk.